Hey there, it's Kevin again, and I'm going to cover how to mode pro or mode promote or screen promote your program to fit a resolution that not only your monitor would prefer, but your RTG graphics card might prefer. So this is for Amiga users with RTG systems. In this case, I'm using a Vampire, which does have native support for Amiga AGA chipset. However, it also features a graphics card. Um, much like the Picasso or CyberVision, it has a, a graphics card uh, as part of its uh, setup. So you can launch programs if you want. Here we go right now, let's launch Lightwave. Now Lightwave is gonna open up a high-res interlaced screen. That's its native Amiga resolution. So double click that, it opens up and if your monitor is compatible with um, 15 kilohertz and these type of modes, you should see a nice image that's just all flickery and gross and weird and shimmery and rather unpleasant. If your monitor is not compatible completely with 15 kilohertz, then you might get a weird blocky, shaded, distorted mess that you can't make heads or tails of. Or if you have a, a scan doubler, you might get the same thing and be okay with it. But uh, even a scan doubler, much like the, uh, the Vampire, because again, the Vampire is using a, a scan doubled HDMI output, uh, you'll get this kind of shimmery effect. And you, some, I mean, you don't, my point is you don't have to live with this. You can, you can actually promote this to open up on your RTG or your, 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 your graphics card that you've got to be more compatible with your modern day display. So we'll go ahead and quit Lightwave. Actually, you know what? Let's not quit Lightwave. Let's keep it open. What you're gonna do next is multitask to the workbench. You're gonna then launch Mode Pro. You should download this from AmyNet, install it, and go ahead and click it, double click it to fire it up. You can see I actually have an entry here for that Forge program. Uh, this is the program that uh, allows you to retarget graphics. So you're gonna click Add, well, first, let's clarify. You should be on screen names, so we're on screen names. You're gonna click Add, and then you're gonna hit Select, and there's that lay, lay, LW layout right there. There's the screen wants. Now, it wants a 672 by 544, and some of you may know better how to do this, but I'm just doing this the way I know it works for me. So you double-click that, so now it's picked. We go to Promotion, set it to Screen Mode, I find the screen that works best for this particular video card, the Saga, is the 960 by 540. You can pick 1280 by 720 if you want, although that will cause the thing to be stretched um, possibly or scaled even more. The one thing I have learned at least seems to be the case with um, Pi 400 and the Vampire's graphics cards is you need to make sure this is 8-bit. Don't do 15, 16, 24, 32. Keep it 8-bit. That goes for anything I promote over here, you see in this list. Whatever mode I pick, I pick the 8-bit. Everything else tends to cause weird chaos things to happen. So you click OK, and then you, know, you should always just use, so you can test it first, but I'll go ahead and click Save. Now when we go back to Lightwave, it's still gonna be janky because it doesn't know to open up in that yet. So we'll hit Quit. Yes. And so now when we open Lightwave up, it'll get mode promoted and boom. And as you can see, I picked 960 by 540, which is a 16 by nine mode. So now Lightwave is stretched out. Now, if this is what you want, because you're using uh, a computer monitor at 16 by nine and you're one of those people that wants the display filled like this, there you go. Just know that circles aren't gonna be circles anymore. So if you're trying to, create things, uh, your aspect ratio is gonna be janky. Now, if you have a TV and not a computer monitor like this, your TV will have the ability to squish the display into a four by three mode. So then you'd be working in a proper aspect ratio for this program and uh, the art that you create will look correct. But this is not a TV and that's one of the big advantages. Some people ask, do you run your HDMI capable Amiga on a television set or do you run it on a, on a computer monitor? I often tend to recommend to people they get a quality television set. Um, 
LG makes a wonderful 27 inch TV. And while the pixel density of the display is not going to be as sharp as a computer monitor, it is still quite nice. It will be a little softer than this because this is a computer monitor, this VSonic. But because it's a TV, it'll let you squish the aspect to four by three, which still technically isn't completely accurate for the Amiga, but it is much closer and it is what the program is expecting. Some computer monitors do allow you to control H and V size, and you can try and cheat that a little bit with those size controls. This monitor, unfortunately, doesn't let me do that. So what's the solution? Because this isn't gonna work. If I'm trying to use this program, having it be this aspect ratio is going to be wrong. So let's go ahead and quit. We'll go back to Mode Pro. And this time, what we're going to do is we're going to tell it, I want just 672. Remember, always hit enter after you enter any value into an Amiga by 544. Because that's what it says it's asking for down here. So we'll hit save. And then we'll go ahead and launch Lightwave again. And now, there you go. You see it? It is off to the side, which is a little annoying. But at least it's opening at the screen size that it's expecting. And it works. So now you're asking yourself, well, can we center that? <laughs> yes. Go to Mode Pro again. And... Where is it at? It'll take me a second here. Uh, here we go. Centering. Horizontally, vertically, both directions. Save. So now we'll launch Lightwave, and there you go. You're no longer triggered, and everything's in the center. Now, one of the things when it comes to graphics cards, or you know, RTG in the Amiga with Lightwave, this is a combination of Lightwave being an older program and also RTG not being quite fully aware of what what's going on with the program. Um, the preview system in Lightwave, as you can see, I'm moving the camera here, as you may have seen how to do in other videos of mine. Let's rotate. So I can use the scroll down here and I can scrub the timeline and we can see the animation playing. However, if I try to make a preview, the preview as it makes works, but the playback doesn't work. That's an RTG issue. That's just not gonna work. And then when you end this playback, Sometimes you'll get graphic corruption and other weirdness. That is an unfortunate side effect. If you are doing animation and you need to be able to make a preview to see what that animation is doing because scrubbing it manually like this is just too slow, then you may want to disable the mode promotion and suffer the flickery screen mess in order to see that animation. That's unfortunately one of the uh, negative side effects. Um, I don't run into it too often in the work I do, most of the time because these vampires are so darn fast, and of course the pies are, are, are fast. Uh, or uh, on an Amiga with a you know, 75, 60 megahertz, so 60, they're so fast, you can usually scrub in real time and get an idea of what your animation's doing, so it's not so much a problem. But that is something to be aware of. If you want to see that animation, you either need to stop mode promoting, um, I mean, that's it. You just need to stop mode promoting to see an animation. Now, this is the Lightwave animation lighting rendering program. The modeler program, you know, if you go back to Mode Pro here, you notice you see Forge, which is the texture program I talked about in another video, but you don't see a modeler in here. See, this says modeler. Like, well, where's the modeler program at? That's because modeler has the option. Let's see how this opened up again, full 16 by 9. Modeler has the ability to pick screen mode itself. It's a little more advanced than the Lightweight program. They were actually a little ahead of the curve here and they allow you to pick screen modes. The trick with Modeler is that it wants a minimum amount of pixels on the screen and it's different from the Lightweight program. So unfortunately I can't use any of the 4x3 modes that Saga currently has like 640x400, 640x480, 640x512. I mean these are these are 4x3 closest, 5x4 closest, closest, closest modes. Um, I can't use those because they don't offer enough pixel coverage that Modeler wants. If you pick those modes, Modeler will yell at you and say, I don't have enough screen, reverting to defaults. So this is why I was wondering or asking if the Saga driver could add modes like 800x600 and 1024x768. That would make life a lot easier. You know, the Picasso and Sugar Vision cards have those options. 
And those are the ones I use on those systems. So here I just open up 960 by 540. Now, I could do exactly what I did in that LightWave program to this. Instead of picking this screen mode here, I could put this back to a default of high res laced, right? And then it's gonna be a flickery mess. And then I could use the mode promotion software. So let's do that now, click okay. So now here we go, flickery mess modeling program. And we're gonna go back to the workbench. We're gonna go back to the workbench, there we go. Go to mode pro, click add, click select, click model UI. So it wants 672 by 432. So we're gonna mode promote. I'm gonna pick the uh, mode I did for the other one, which was the 960 by 540. And it wants, there we go. And it wants a 672 by 432. And you're probably saying, well, wait, that, that, there's modes. There's four by three-ish modes. Well, no, there's there wasn't because there was that 640 by 480 and the 640 by 512, but there wasn't this 672. So that's the problem that you run into. And then, of course, you can center it. We'll hit save. Come back here and quit. So now when we launch Modeler, which should be... <laughs> it didn't work at all. Uh, that's because it reverted back to its Saga screen that I had selected. That's interesting, folks. Let's go back and click high res light, see what happens. Watch it crash. Huh, that's interesting. So it's it's being mode promoted to 960 by 540. And I guess because this modeler program is aware of selectable RTG screen modes, it's maybe just reading what it's being told by Mode Pro and saying, oh, you're asking for this screen? Fine, I'll open up on this screen. And unfortunately, it's ignoring my custom configuration here. So we all just learned something. Modeler is stuck in 16 by nine mode. So again, this is why running your Amiga on a television set if you're going to use HDMI is a better option because you get that four by three switch to make it the proper aspect. And honestly, um, with a program like Modeler, uh, that's even more important because as, uh, now see, yeah, there you go. So now it's opening back up in the regular NTSC mode. So then we'll go back and pick a, um, so here, I'll, I'll show you again what happens. So if I try to pick like, um, remember it wants 672. So there's, there's no 672 here. I've got 640 by 512 and then we jump to 960. So I don't have, a screen mode that it can open in. So I have to pick the 960 by 540. And unfortunately that's gonna be a widescreen. So the reason the widescreen is a problem is because if we go to make a ball here and we hold down the left control to constrain the creation of a ball, it's it's gonna be oval and look like a football. It's gonna look like Stewie's head from Family Guy. So that's why that's the problem. This is why you need the four by three switch on a television set to squish this. Or you need the Saga driver to have a mode like 800 by 600 so that we can get modeler back into a, a more four by three aspect or square aspect ratio at least. So I hope that clears up some of the mystery with promoting programs using Mode Pro and LightWave. This should be the same on, on Vampires, on Picasso systems, on CyberVision systems, whether you're using Workbench 3.1, which I recommend by the way, or you're using Coffin or whatever. If it's got RTG, you want to use Mode Pro, and that's the mode you want to pick. One thing I almost forgot before I end this video is in LightWave, it does something really bizarre. I'm going to go ahead and hit F9. You're going to see this preview render screen show up, which is in black and white. And it currently it's just black because I didn't put anything in the shot. We'll turn on the gradient backdrop, which we talked about in the other video. So now you'll see the black and white preview and then the color preview. You don't want to mode promote either of these screens. If you do that, weird things will happen. You may mode promote these screens and think to yourself, it worked. No, use it for a little bit longer. It'll start to either crash your whole system. And this doesn't matter if it's Vampire, Pi, or Real Amigas. It will hang and do weird things. Do not mode promote the render view screen and do not mode promote this screen. Let it open up how it wants to open up. If you, again, if you don't have a monitor that's fully compatible and it's gonna be all janky and weird, that sucks, get a better monitor. 
This screen in particular is a really bizarre one. This top portion of the screen is actually a high-res screen. High-res NTSC, high-res PAL, depending on your Amiga. This is a vampire, so I believe it's always going to be PAL. This little strip down here is actually another screen, screen mode. This is high-res interlaced mode, and that's so they can have nice, crisp text. Of course, that crisp text doesn't look crisp because it's interlaced and it's flickering, and this ViewSonic is doing the best it can to try and show that. But... So when you try to mode promote these, these actually show up as two separate screens in Mode Pro. But don't promote these screens. It, it, trust me, it'll lock up and crash and do weird things. You just don't do it. Now you're telling yourself, well, do I have to just stick with the Ham 8, you know, Unmode Pro render output? That's going to look all flickery and gross. Well, no. If you've got an actual Picasso 2 card in your Amiga, you can use Picasso 2. And when you hit the render button and the display draws, you're going to get a nice rock-solid VGA image of your render. Um, if you have the CyberVision plugin installed, which I believe the Coffin release for Vampire includes, you can pick it and you'll get this additional pop-up screen that shows you a nice clean VGA-like uh, display. And you'll get that when you hit render. I'm a retro Amiga art nerd, so I tend to just stay in 8-bit ham. Um, sometimes I do 6-bit ham. Oh, 6-bit ham. But uh, you know, I prefer this because, you know, when you start rendering things in 24-bit color and VGA and use these these fancy new modes, I mean, it starts to beg the question, like, well, then why are you doing it on your Amiga? Because it can? I mean, that is cool that it can do it. You know, a 30-year-old computer was rendering 24-bit quality uh, still images or animations back then. That is pretty slick. But, you know, it's not it's not that native chipset on, on the computer. It's not that original coding and... and, and um, and gadgetry, for lack of a better word. You know, I love ham. I love the tricks that they did to make ham work back in that era, back when 24-bit display buffer cards were just horrendously expensive um, and just out of reach for most people. Commodore and the Amiga team specifically figured out how to get us more colors on the screen at once using the ham mode. And I just think it's a neat little trick. I like the way it looks. I guess you could say it's why people like film grain and, and shooting on film, or people prefer listening to the warmth of a record with its scratches and ticks and pops and fuzz. For me, it's like ham eight is just, gosh, I just like my ham eight. So I think that covers everything extensive, extensively. I really need to learn how to talk one of these days. I'm gonna keep making these videos. So that is Mode Pro and how to get Lightwave promoted. And again, lots of programs. Any program that opens up a custom screen like Lightwave and that doesn't use a workbench mode, you got to promote it if you're using RTG. So that's how you do it. This is the best way to do it. There is another program called MCP, which includes screen promotion options. I don't recommend it. It's very buggy and can cause your Amiga promoted screens to lock up and crash. Think Coffin comes with MCP. Uh, the, the screen promotion is turned off by default, probably because they know that it's buggy. I don't think Coffin had Mode Pro installed by default, though. So you may have to, like I said, find this on Aminet and install it yourself. So I hope that helps, guys. Good luck and have fun.